We have a need to search out our Hebraic roots to discover what truth has been altered. This intensive study, still in progress since 2007, has gathered scattered and hidden pearls of knowledge that prove to be truth and put them together in these series of teachings. Not everything that a particular ministry teaches is wrong, but on the other hand, neither is everything taught by man entirely correct, including my teachings. Only one, and that is Yeshua, was truth incarnate. His original words were entirely correct always. Not everybody has all the truth, but we are allowed to study, discern and glean the truth from those around us. Welcome to another teaching on deception from my book, Deception. Part 31. 10. We will now briefly examine the proof of our claims. What we know at this stage has been added. Eternal life in fire. The very first deception devised by Satan. Genesis 3, 1 to 5. And the serpent was cunning above every beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made, and he said to the woman, It is so that Elohim has said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, Of the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, Elohim has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, Surely you shall not die. Aha, uh -huh. first deception. For Elohim knows that in the day you eat of it, even your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. Yahweh said, if you dis disobey me, you will surely die. Satan says, no you won't. He is still using this lie today. In the scripture where it says, surely die, the surely is not really properly translated. Genesis 2.17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you may not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you, you shall surely die. It actually says, dying you shall die. There's two deaths, the first death and the second death. Basically what Yahweh is saying, if you sin, yes, you'll have your natural death, but then there'll be a second death which is going to be the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 13 to 15. And the sea gave up the dead in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead in them, and each one of them was judged according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And if any, anyone was not found having been written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. We're all going to suffer the first death, the natural death, unless there's a, a rapture, but we don't want to suffer the second death. Ezekiel 18, 4-32 Behold, they are all my souls, as the soul of the Father, also the soul of the Son, they are mine. The soul that sins, it shall die. So he's not talking about the natural death, because we'll all die. And it's not sin necessarily that makes us die the first death, but it'll be the second death, where sin will send us into the second death. 20. The soul that sins it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, and the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be on him. But the wicked, if he will turn from all his sins, which he has done, and keep all my statutes, and do justice and righteousness, Living he shall live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he has done, they shall not be mentioned to him. In his righteousness, which he has done, he shall live. Do I take pleasure and delight in the death of the wicked, declares Adonai, Yahweh? Is it not that he should turn from his ways and live? When the righteous one turns from his righteousness and does injustice and dies in them, he shall die for his injustice which he has done. And when the wicked turns from his wickedness that he has done and does justice and righteousness, he shall keep his soul alive. Because he sees and turns from all his transgressions that he has done, surely he shall live, he shall not die. Notice there he says the soul will stay alive. So the soul will basically die in the second death. For I do not have delight in the death of him who dies, declares Adonai Yahweh, so turn and live. 1 John 3.36 he who believes in the Son has life that is eternal, and he who does not obey the Son will not see life. Rather, the wrath of Yahweh will rise up against him. 
see life, has not life that is eternal, not even eternal flames. So they won't see life. In the second death, they won't have life. They won't have life eternal in the life of flames. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is everlasting life in Yeshua, Messiah, our Master. Revelation 21.8 But the fearful and the unbelieving and the vulnerable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars will have their part in the lake burning with fire and brimstone. Satan would like us to believe and accept that we have been taught from a twisted tradition that the person who sins unrepentant will live forever in a lake of fire with the demons who will be in charge dishing out torture, pain, etc. But nowhere in the scripture is this said. Why? Because life in hell fire would mean we have a mean and very angry God who enjoys the screams of billions of people for all eternity. This is Satan's plan to get us to believe that this is the character of Yahweh. Satan needs us to look at Yahweh in this way. One needs to ask one question of themselves. Do they believe a God that would send his one and only son to die a torturous and humiliating death would create a place that would be used for torture for all eternity? Does the character of Yahweh come off as a tyrant who enjoys hearing the screams of people who have decided not to worship him? Would this sound like a way to glorify him as a loving and giving father? Or does this sound like a way to, to de-glorify him as a mean and unmerciful tyrant? Luke 6, 36 Therefore be merciful even as your Father also is merciful. 2 Peter 3, 9 Yahweh is not negligent concerning his promises, as some count neg negligent, but is patient towards us, not wishing any to perish, but all to come to repentance. So Yahweh is a merciful Yahweh. The devil is a tyrant who loves torture and loves torturing people. Torture is a tool of Satan and his demons which is proven by those tyrants he has possessed and used throughout history. The definition of death is quite clear. The person no longer exists in the realm they live in. The second death is quite clear. The person who experiences this no longer exists in the heavenly realm, hell or the lake of fire. They're basically their soul and their body is gone. Eternal life in the heavenly realm is only promised to those who qualify according to these scriptures. Ezekiel 18, 5-32 But a man that is righteous and does what is right, just and right, who has not eaten on the mountains and his eyes have not lifted up to the idols of the house of Israel, and has not defiled his neighbour's wife, and has not come near to a menstruating woman, and has not oppressed a man who, who returns his pledge to the debtor and has not robbed by robbery, has given his bread to the hungry and has covered the naked with clothing. He has not given on interest and has not taken increase. He has turned his hand from injustice, having done true justice between man and man. He has walked in my statutes and has kept my judgments to deal truly. He is righteous. Surely he shall live, declares Adonai Yahweh. But the wicked, if he will turn from all his sins which he has done and keeps all my statutes and do justice and righteousness, living he shall live, he shall not die. And his transgressions that he has done, they shall not be mentioned to him in his righteousness, which he has done, he shall live. But the wicked turns from his wickedness that he has done and does justice and righteousness, he shall keep his soul alive. Because he sees and turns from all his transgressions that he has done, surely he shall live, he shall not die. John 3.36 He who believes in the Son has life, that is eternal. John 3.15-16 that everyone believing into him should not be destroyed, but have everlasting life. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that everyone believing into him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 8.51 Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone watches over my word, you will not see death forever, never. John 11.26 He who believes in me, he will never die. Do you believe this? He's not talking about the first death, he's talking about the second death. Satan has successfully set up a smokescreen to confuse us into his lies. Even he will not live for eternity. Ezekiel 28, 18 and 19 By the host of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trade, you have defiled your holy places. So I brought a fire from your midst, and it shall devour you, and I will give you for ashes on the earth in the sight of all who see you. 
All who know you among the people shall be appalled at you. You shall be terrors, and you will not be forever. And there you go. You know, we can stop there on Ezekiel 28. And Satan and the demons, you will not be forever. They are not going to live forever, even in the lake of fire, torturing people. One day, he will be burnt to ashes also. The first smoke screen. He's put up a few smoke screens. Hell. The word hell. The word hell is used throughout the King James Bible and many other Bibles, but it has many meanings. Using the one word hell to define a number of places where the dead from this world go. Hell, as used in the King James Bible, is a simplified expression which has a number of meanings. Hell is used about 54 times. The translators used hell and grave for three different words in the original tongues. Tartarus, Gehenna, Hades, or Sheol in Hebrew. They also used pit for the abyss. Sheol or Hades used 65 times in the King James Version. Grave, hell or pit. The Hebrew word Sheol simply means the unseen. In the Old Testament, Sheol received both the good and the wicked. It is often synonymous with the grave. Put simply, Sheol means the death state and is never connected with the concepts of hell and eternal torment as taught today. Examples of hell for Sheol. Deuteronomy 32.22 For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn to the lowest hell, Sheol, and shall consume the earth with its increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Isaiah 14.9 Hell, Sheol, from below is moved for you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all the he-goats of the earth, and is raised from the thrones, all the kings of the nations. Then we have the grave for Sheol, Isaiah 13, 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave, Sheol. I will redeem them from death, O death, where are your plagues? O grave, Sheol, where is your ruin? Repentance shall be hidden from my eyes. Isaiah 14, 10 to 15. All of them shall speak and say to you, Are you also as weak as we are? Are you like us? Your pride is brought down to the grave, Sheol, and the noise of your harps, the maggot is spread under you, and the worms cover you. How you are fallen from the heavens, O shining star, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will go up to the heavens, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit in the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I will go up above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to hell, Sheol, to the sides of the pit. Pit, the mean of the pit, part of Sheol, Isaiah 14, 15. Yet you shall be brought down to hell, Sheol, to the sides of the pit. Which also means cistern, dungeon, fountain, pit, or well. Hades, used 11 times in the King James Version. The place, state of departed souls, the grave of hell. Greek word, Hades, which appears 11 times in the New Testament, is used in precisely the same way as the Hebrew Sheol. Hades, Luke 16, 23. And in hell, Hades, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Acts 2, 31. Seeing this beforehand, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, Hades, nor would his, his flesh see corruption. 1 Corinthians 15:55. O death, where is your sting? O grave, Hades, where is your victory? Revelation 20, 13 and 15 makes it clear that Hades must be empty prior to the final judgment. Revelation 20, 13 to 15. And the sea gave up the dead in it, and death and hell, Hades, delivered up the dead in them, and each one of them was judged according to their works. And death and hell, Hades, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And if anyone was not found having been written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. Tartarus. The Greek word Tartarus is used only once in the New Testament, 2 Peter 2, 4, and refers only to the punishment of fallen angels. Tartarus is never used in reference to human punishment, either now or in the future, and so also has nothing to do with our modern conception of eternal punishment in hell. 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God did not spare sinning angels, but thrust them down into Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness, being reserved to judgment. The Greek word abyss, or bottomless pit, refers only to the punishment of the beast and Satan. It is never used in reference to human punishment, either now or in the future. So also has nothing to do with our modern concepts 
conceptions of eternal punishment in hell. This, Revelation 9.11. And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in Greek his name is Apollyon. Revelation 23. And he cast him into the abyss and shut up him up and set a seal on him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little time. Gehenna, a Hebrew origin, a valley of Jerusalem, used figuratively. Gehenna does not teach the doctrine of eternal torment, but of an unquenchable fire. This word Gehenna appears only 12 times in the entire New Testament and is almost always translated hell by modern translators. Gehenna, Mark 9.43 and if your hand offends you, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life main than to have two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Matthew 10.28 And do not fear those who kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. I'll get into that. So it doesn't say the eternal uh, torture. It might be eternal flames, fire, but not does no mention of eternal torture. In actual fact, it says he'll, he'll destroy both soul and body in Gehenna, in hell. None of the twelve places in which this word occurs describe hell as a place of eternal torment, as taught by so many today. None of the twelve verses mention torment. Put another way, the Bible never says that anyone is tormented in Gehenna. The final place for hell, death, Sheol, Hades, Abyss, Tartarus, Pit, is the lake of fire, or Gehenna. Revelation 20.13-15 <coughs> And the sea gave up the dead in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead in them, and each one of them was judged according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And if anyone was not found having been written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21.8 but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars will have their part in the lake burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So notice there was no mention of eternal punishment, torture, just death, the death of the body and the soul. So the second smoke stream put up, eternal or everlasting. Note, eternal fire does not mean eternal torment, because once the fire destroys and consumes both soul and body, it is dead and no longer experiences the fire. Ash will be all that remains. Thus it can be called everlasting punishment, everlasting fire and everlasting smoke. But it is not everlasting torment, because death must follow. One's body can be placed into an everlasting crematorium, but only ash, fire and smoke will remain. In the Greek... They use forever and ever aeon, meaning an age. Two places where torment is used with forever is in Revelation 14 11, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever, an age, and ever, an age. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his, his name. So forever and ever really does not mean for eternity, it means for an age, a time period. And this is even long before the second death, but its meaning is not eternal. Also, Revelation 20.10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever, an age and ever. So it's an age and an age. And also note the word are has been added. It could have been were. Note this translation, Revelation 20.10 in the HRB. And the devil leading them astray was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet were and they were tormented day and night for ages to ages for a period of time, not for eternity. The only place where punishment is used with everlasting is in Matthew 25.46 And these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal. However, this is very different to the Hebrew. In the Shem Tov, the Hebrew of Matthew, verse 46, And they to me become abhorrent, will hide self forever, and the righteous to life with me forever. 
So it's not eternal punishment, it is he hides himself from them forever. They will never see Yahweh. The true translation of the Greek word aeon does not mean an indefinite span of time. It is an age, and aeon is an age lasting or to an age. The Hebrew word alam, translated everlasting, is also obscured in its true meaning. Many other examples where everlasting does not mean what we think or how we use the word today. So here's some examples where they use eternal, but it's not eternal. Jude 1.7 And Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in like manner to these committing fornication and going away after other flesh, laid an example before times, undergoing vengeance of everlasting fire, until God will restore the fortunes of Sodom. Ezekiel 16.55 When your sister Sodom and her daughters shall return to their former state, and Samaria and her daughters shall return to their former state, then you and your daughters shall return to your former state. So, eternal does not mean eternal. Ammon is to become a wasteland forever and rise no more. Zephaniah 2, nine, Jeremiah 25.27 Until Yahweh will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites. Jeremiah 49.6 Again, Forever doesn't mean forever. An Amorite or Moabite is forbidden to enter Yahweh's congregation forever until the tenth generation, Deuteronomy 23 3. Habakkuk tells us of mountains that were everlasting, that is, until they were shattered, Habakkuk 3 33 6. The Aaronic priesthood was to be an everlasting priesthood, Exodus 40 15, that is, until it was superseded by the Melchizedek priesthood, Hebrews 7 14 18. Many translations of the Bible inform us that Yahweh would dwell in Solomon's temple forever, 1 Kings 8.13, that is, until the temple was destroyed. Fire for Israel's sin offering of a ram without blemish is never to be put out. It shall be a perpetual until Christ the Lamb of God dies for our sins. Yahweh's waves of wrath roll over Jonah forever, until Yahweh delivers him from the large fish's belly on the third day, Jonah 2.6.10 and 1.17. Egypt and Elam will rise no more, Jeremiah twenty five twenty seven, until Yahweh will restore the fortunes of Egypt, Ezekiel twenty nine fourteen, and restore the fortunes of Elam, Jeremiah forty nine thirty nine. Israel's judgment lasts forever until the Spirit is poured out and Yahweh restores it, Isaiah thirty two thirteen and fifteen. The King James Bible, as well as many others, tell us that a bond slave was to serve his master forever, Exodus twenty one six. That is until he died his death. Here then is absolute proof from the scriptures themselves that an aeon is an age or a particular period or interval. It is not forever. There was times before the aeons will ages, 1 Corinthians 2, 7, before the aeons, therefore not eternal. God made the aeons, worlds, ages, Hebrews 1, 2, makes the aeons, therefore not eternal. There are aeons, ages in the past, Colossians 1.26, get from aeons, ages, therefore not eternal. This present age is called an aeon, Galatians 1.4, the present wicked aeon, ages, world, therefore not eternal. So we've got ma many examples of the w use of the word aeon, which people have translated as for eternity. And it doesn't actually mean that. It means a period of time. All aeons will come to all their ends, the ends of the world are come. 1 Corinthians 10.11 and consummation is plural of the earth, aeons plural, therefore obviously not possible to be eternal. The scriptural usage of the word aeon, aeons and aeonos prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the Greek aeons are not English eternities. Basically the word where they've used eternities, it's not eternities, it's ages to ages, a period of time. The third smoke screen was everlasting punishment. The lake of fire, the second death, is not as the devil proclaims. It is not a place where the devil rules. It is not a place of eternal torture. It is a place of eternal death, however. Because the, de the devil is not going to live for eternity. He is going to finish up as ash. So how can he torture people in hell forever? And death is eternal separation from Yahweh and all that is salvation all that is salvation and happiness. So basically the second death 
is eternal separation from Yahweh and happiness and living with him. Matthew 25, 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Very different to the Shem Tov, the Hebrew, And they to me become abhorrent, will hide self forever, and the righteous to life with me forever. The word everlasting punishment, as used by the King James Version, is very different to the Hebrew Shem Tov of being separated from Yahweh forever. Also, punishment does not mean torture forever. The Bible never contradicts itself. Yeshua meant what he said. The wages of sin is death. Death is permanent separation. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 For these are the judgment day will be recompensed with eternal destruction from the presence of our Master and from the glory of his power. Referring to Isaiah 2.19 also. Matthew 10.28 And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So your soul and body in the lake again are destroyed. If both body and soul are destroyed, then there can be no life, and hence no eternal life, only eternal death. The wages of sin is death, the body is killed and the soul is killed. Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. If hell is a place where people reside in eternal good health, except, of course, the flames that burn them, then how is it possible for us to walk on their, on their ashes after they are burned up? Read what is recorded in Malachi about this simple fact that will occur on the last day. Malachi 4, 1, 2, 3. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a fire pot, and all the proud and every doer of wickedness shall be chaff, and the coming day will set them ablaze, says Yahweh of hosts, which will not leave root or branches to them, but to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness, shall rise up, and the healing will be on his wings, the most extreme part of the garment tassel, and you shall go out and frisk like calves of the stall, and you shall tread under the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day which I am preparing, says Yahweh of hosts. They won't be alive, just ash. Same as the devil, just ash, and all these demons. And if Satan is running hell and in control of the eternal torment of all those that reside in hell, then why would the word of Yahweh tell us in the following passage that Satan will burn up right before our eyes? Ezekiel 28, 17 and 19. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. I have cast you to the earth, and I will put you before the kings, that they may see you. By the host of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trade, you have defiled your holy places. So I brought a fire from your midst, and it shall devour you, and I will give you for ashes on the earth in the sight of all who see you. And all who know you among the people shall be appalled at you, and you shall be terrors, and you will not be forever. So Satan is not going to live for eternity, even in a lake of fire torturing other people. What day is this and when will this occur? Hmm. Biblical confirmation is everywhere in the Bible on this simple truth. John 5, 29 And they will come out and the ones having done good into a resurrection of life and the ones having practiced evil into a resurrection of judgment, damnation. Daniel 12, 2 And many of those sleeping in the earth's dust shall awake some to everlasting life and some to reproaches and to everlasting loathing. Everyone will be resurrected one day. Absolutely everyone that ever lived one day gets up to either receive their eternal reward of a happy and peaceful filled life in the Father's kingdom will they rise to live again only to be put to death for the final time. It must be noted that Yahweh's statutes given to Moses for punishment here on this earth to those who break certain laws was death and separation. He never said there was to be tortured no matter what was the crime. Leviticus 22, 2-7 And you shall say to the sons of Israel, any man of the sons of Israel and the aliens who are living in Israel who gives of his seed to Moloch shall certainly be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. 8. And you shall keep my statutes and shall do them. I am Yahweh who is sanctifying you. Any man who curses his father and his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father and his mother. His blood shall be on him. And a man who commits adultery with a man's wife, who commits adultery with the wife of his neighbour, the adulterer and the adulteress dying shall die. And a man who lies with his father's wife, who has uncovered the nakedness of his father, both of them dying shall die. Their blood shall be on them. And a man who lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them dying shall die. They have performed a perversion, their blood shall be on them. 
and a man who lies with a male as one lies with a woman. Both of them have done a detestable thing. Surely they shall die, and their blood shall be on them. And a man who takes a woman and her mother it is wickedness, and they shall burn, burn him and them, and they shall be no wickedness in their midst. And a man who lies with an animal, dying shall die, and you shall kill the animal. And if a woman draws near to any animal to lie with it, you shall even put to death the woman and the animal, surely they shall die, and their blood shall be on them. And a man or woman, when there is among them a medium or a fortune teller, certainly they shall die. They shall stone them with stones, their blood is on them. Numbers 35, 30. Whoever kills any person, the murderer, shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, and one witness shall not testify against the person to die. And you shall take no ransom for the life of a murderer, and if he is punishable for death, the murderer certainly shall die. So, God said to Moses, you know, there's the punishment, it was death, there was no torture, it was basically just death. But why must there be a hell? Why must the wicked be burned up to ashes? To put it simply, sin will not be allowed to rise up a second time in eternity. Yahweh will not accept rebellious people into his kingdom. Nahum 1.9 What are you plotting against Yahweh? He will make it complete destruction. Distress shall not rise up a second time. So there he says it. Nahum 1.9 Heaven must and will be a place of eternal peace and happiness as well as holiness and perfection. If sin is not allowed to rise up again, then what must become of all the wicked? They must die, plain and simple. It is a test, it is a wedding, and we are invited, and we cannot enter the wedding without the proper dress. To walk in clothed in the sins of the world will tarnish heaven, and then heaven will be no different than the world. Yahweh is merciful. He is calling out to billions daily, pleading with them to choose his way over Satan. He offers eternal life if you choose his way. But if you choose not his way, then you are choosing death. It is your choice, not his. The Almighty gives you free will to choose as you wish. Why he did not create robots, he created a people that would choose to love him. Yahweh did not destroy Lucifer for the first time. He revolted in heaven for a simple reason. It's called free will. Had he killed Satan, would not all the angels have looked on it and saw God that will kill anyone that disobeys him? This would have caused the angels to worship Yahweh in a fear of being killed if they didn't. No, that is not free will. That is forced worship. It is no different than the tree in the Garden of Eden that the Almighty told Adam and Eve not to touch. They had many other trees all throughout the garden to eat from, just one was not to be touched. Why? Because the Almighty did not create robots. He gave us free will. He wants us to choose him over the tree. To choose the tree is to choose another way other than his way. The choice is there so we can choose to worship him from all our heartfelt desires to do so. Just as the tree in the garden was a choice, so in the sin, sin in our lives, a choice to ignore his will. Will you choose him today? 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous that he may forgive us the sins and may cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah 65 12. And I will number you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter, because I called and you did not answer. I spoke and you did not hear. And you did the evil in my eyes, and you chose that in which I had no pleasure. The Bible is plain here. The Almighty allows us to make the choice to either serve him or not. He plainly says that they did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. They did choose to, to, to do what he did not want them to choose. 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 to 9 Since it is a just thing with Yahweh to pay back tribulation to those oppressing you, and to give you those being oppressed, will relief with us at the revelation of the Master Yeshua from heaven with the host of his cherubs. In flaming fire giving vengeance to those not knowing Yahweh and to those not obeying the good news of our Master Yeshua Messiah, Isaiah 66.15, Jeremiah 10.25. For these at the judgment day will be recompensed with eternal destruction from the presence of our Master and from the glory of his power. Isaiah 2.9. If you choose to deny him and his word, you will be removed from the presence of Yahweh for all eternity. This is death. And this is the reason for all the weeping and gnashing of teeth that Matthew 22.13 speaks of. All will understand on that day that they have chosen hell on their own accord, and they all know that they are messed up a big time. This is the ultimate in big time mess-ups, the ultimate. To be separated from Yahweh is to be the opposite of his reality. If he is eternally alive, you must be eternally dead. 
if you are to be perfectly separated from him. But even now he is merciful, he, will, he still shows a loving and merciful heart. Even when they choose not to worship him, he is still merciful. How? He lets them actually die. This that way they won't have to deal with torture, pain for all of eternity. The devil wants you to see Yahweh this way so you won't see that he really loves you dearly. So dearly, in fact, that he actually came on earth in human form and dealt with all of the everyday hassles and temptations as we do and yet chose not to sin. Why? So he could be the perfect sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. He took our place on the cross. We deserve to die, not him. Why? Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is everlasting life in Yeshua, Messiah, and Master. What about punishment? Between the first and the second death there are degrees of punishment and reward. Luke 23.43 And Yeshua said to him, Truly today I say to you, you will be with me in paradise. 1 John 5.16.17 if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life to him, to the ones not sinning unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that you should ask about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Matthew 5.22 But I say to you that anyone who provokes to anger his brother without cause is condemned to judgment, and anyone who should say to his brother, I spit on you, is condemned to the assembly. And anyone who should say you are a coward is a condemned to the Gehenna of fire. Luke twenty forty seven. Those who devour the houses of widows with the pretense of prolonging their prayers, they will receive a greater judgment. Hebrews ten twenty nine thirty. How much worse punishment do you think will be thought worthy to receive the ones trampling the Son of Yahweh, and having counted the blood of the covenant as common in which he was sanctified, and having insulted the Spirit of grace? For you know him who said, Vengeance belongs to me, I will repay, says Yahweh, and again Yahweh will judge his people. James 3 1. My brothers, do not be many teachers, but know that we will receive a greater judgment. So here's some references if you want further study, to get deeper into it all. You have to take those down. So I hope you have the revelation that uh, our Yahweh, our Elohim, is a merciful Elohim. That there are two deaths. Yes, we probably most of us will all suffer the first death, but hopefully we will never enter into the second death into the lake of fire. That we will pass the judgment seat and be proven not rebellious that we loved Yahweh, and that we won't have to worry about maybe some of our loved ones who finish up in in the lake of fire, that it'll be death. They won't be there for eternities being tortured by the devil. But it's the death of the body and the soul. So thanks for listening. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.